Black Friday just got bigger and better with not just one, but three days of Black Friday. So you get extra days to get these amazing deals. Get up to 50% off on two Coke Original Soft Drinks, only $30. Real Good Mixed Chicken Portions, just $47. Bocomo Super Maze Meal, only $88. Two Rama Original Bricks, just $35. And a six-pack of Tafel Lager Beer, only $44. Three days of Black Friday, valid until Friday, only at Shopfront. Good morning to all the Namibian learners out there. My name is Ngamen Dunge Namwandi and I'll be your English teacher for today. In my class today, I have Chanel. Good morning, Chanel, and welcome back. But before we start with today's lesson, we are going to take our hand sanitizer and we are going to sanitize our hands. In and out, in between our fingers. There we go. Today's lesson will be about nouns. Okay, today we are going to do a recap on all the four types of nouns that we did. Can you still remember the four types of nouns, Chanel? Yes, she can still remember the four types of nouns that we did. The four types of nouns that we did were common nouns, proper nouns, abstract nouns, and collective nouns. Now, remember in our first lesson, we did common nouns and proper nouns. Chanel, can you remember what the common noun is? Yeah, she can still remember what the common noun is. So I'm going to explain what the common noun is. A common noun are names that we give to ordinary objects. They do not start with a capital letter unless they begin a sentence. Examples, trees, chairs, and tables. Moving on to proper nouns. Chanel, can you still remember what the proper noun is? Yippee, yippee. She can still remember what the proper noun is. A proper noun are specific names that we give to specific people, places, days of the week, and months of the year. They start with capital letters. Example, Chanel, Shoprite, Winduk. Now, we are going to look on the board and see if we can still remember the types of nouns that we did. Chanel, look on the board. Nependa. Is Nependa a common noun or a proper noun? Nependa is a proper noun. Why? Because it begins with a capital letter. All right. Is Ventuk a common noun or a proper noun? It is a proper noun because it starts with a capital letter. Moving on. Is table a common noun or a proper noun? It is a common noun because it names an ordinary object and it starts with a small letter. All right, we are going to go back to our book. On the same page, page three, and we are going to move on to abstract noun and collective noun. Chanel, can you still remember what the, an abstract noun is? Yippee, yippee, she can still remember what an abstract noun is. An abstract noun names or is something that we cannot see, touch, 
or measure. It is often a feeling or an emotion. Example, love, jealousy, sickness. I am only going to mention a few. Right. Now, we are going to move on to collective noun. Chanel, what is a collective noun? Of course, a collective noun names a group of people, animals, or objects. Now, in your book, you can see we have a group of fish there. Now, what name do we give to fish when they are in a group? A school of fish! They can still remember that. Do you have any question, Chanel? No question. On page four, we have a short story. Chanel is going to read with me. Okay? We are not going to read everything for you. You can ask mommy and daddy to continue reading for you. Chanel, Let's start reading. I hope you are listening attentively. Now, it says, Today is Thursday, and the group of boys are running with excitement. Samuel and his friends are helping Mr. Mutolo on the farm. One can hear the happiness in their voices as they are talking about holiday times. They are passing the litter of kittens in the bed to the head of sheep. Well done, Chanel. Give a round of applause. All right. Now we are going to look at all the nouns that we have learned in this study. I have done it for you. Okay. With this activity, I have given you the answers. All right. Now, first question says, which common nouns did we find there are boys, there are friends, voices, kittens, then, right? With the next one, it says, which proper nouns did we find? Thursday, Samuel, Mr. Montolo, Deep Faith, or Chicoto Lake. You can see that the proper nouns are written with capital letters. Okay, moving on to abstract nouns. What did we find in the story? We found, Chanel, what did we find? We found excitement. I want you to smile because it's, you are excited. Happiness, boredom, love, pride. Moving on to the next one. Collective nouns. Chanel, what did we find in the story? We found group of boys, litter of kittens, head of sheep, lake of water, stack of wood. Hooray! Let us move on to the next page. I have done so much talking today, so now it's your turn to do your activities. On page five, you are going to do activity two. What are you going to do? You are going to fill in the common nouns in the left column and the proper nouns in the right column. So that is the activity that you are going to do on that page. Moving on to the next page, and that will be page six. On page six, you are going to do activity three. Now, the instruction says, write the correct abstract noun next to each word or emotion below. I hope that you have paid attention and that you are going to do your activities. We are going to move on to the next activity on page seven. On page seven, there is activity four that you are going to do. And the instructions are, sort these nouns in their correct categories 
and complete the columns below. Those are the activities that you are going to do. It's quite a lot, but I hope that you are going to enjoy them. Moving on to the next page, page 8. On page 8, we are going to do activity 5. Now, activity 5 goes on until page 9. The instructions are identify the underlined nouns in the sentences below and write them in the spaces provided. What are you going to do? You are going to identify the underlined nouns. For example, freedom in the sentences below and write them down in the spaces provided. Like I said, activity 5 goes on until page 9. Activity 5 goes on until page 9. That will be the end of your activities. I hope you will have fun and that you are going to enjoy your activities. On page 10, there is a memorandum for the activities that I have given you. I hope that you are not going to cheat. Do not cheat. Okay? The memorandum goes on until page 11. It goes on until page 11. I hope that you have paid attention and that you have listened attentively. But before we close our lesson for today, Chanel and I are going to take our hand sanitizers, sanitize our hands, In and out, Chanel. There we go. In between our fingers, Chanel. Straighten our arms just to see if we are practicing the social distance. I hope that you had fun. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, my name is Shoshi and I am Peck. My mommy used to tell me that um, I need to wash my hands and sanitize it to keep the germs away. Also one thing you can remember is to sing the alphabet song while you wash your hands. Uh, after that it will be super clean. I usually do it. And until next time, bye! Great combo deal from Choppies. Top score maize meal 10 kilograms, Park Pro Fed Cook Flour 10 kilograms, Pulana Elbow 3 kilograms, Rice King 10 kilograms, Sugar King 5 kilograms, White or Brown Sugar and Pulana 1 kilogram spaghetti for only $499 million 95 cents. Choppies, great value for your money. Welcome to my Zone Online School. My name is Teacher Kennedy. I would like to welcome my friend here, Chanel, who is going to be helping me deliver this important lesson. But before we get into our lesson, let's start by sanitizing. Let's squeeze our hands. 
inside and outside, in between fingers? Yes. Let's make sure we are maintaining this social distance. It's important. And let's put on our masks. Right, our today's lesson is going to be about gender and diminutives. Gender and diminutives. Okay, let's turn our books to, uh, on page four, or page three, sorry, page three where we are talking about uh, gender and the diminutives. One may want to know what is gender. Yes, gender is a noun for male and female people or animals. Masculine nouns are words for men, boys, and male animals. I understand you still remember that uh, during the last lessons, you talked about nouns, and you were defining nouns as names of things, names of people, names of places. You talked about proper and common nouns. Feminine nouns are words for women, girls, and female animals. Those are feminine nouns. Masculine nouns are words for men, boys, and male animals. You must not this or understand, remember this. Every person or animal is identified by being male or female. Without it, we could not know its gender. I would like to give you examples of what we are talking about. Let's start with the bridegroom. Bridegroom is the masculine. Bride is the feminine. King, masculine. Queen, feminine. Actor, masculine. Actress, feminine. Father is the masculine. And mother is the feminine. So we are saying you can identify a person by his or her gender. Let's go to animals. Rooster. We are now talking about animals. Rooster is masculine. Hen is the feminine. The female. Bull, cow, ram, iwi, stallion, man. Let's now go to common gender. There are other things that use the same gender noun, whether it's male or female. Whether it's a male person or a female person, they use a common gender noun. They could be either male or female, like what I'm saying. Examples of people are as follows. Doctor. Whether a person is female or male, if is a doctor, we refer to him or her as a doctor. So the word or the noun doctor is a common noun. It, will, it applies to both males and females. Dancer, scientist. I've heard people saying, my mother is a scientist. My brother is a scientist. So the, word, the noun scientist works for both. Artist, engineer, and lawyer. There are also other gender nouns that we refer to as or we call neuter. 
They are neither male nor female, like lifeless things, non-living things. You cannot say this table is a male table, or that chair is a female chair. So they are called neuter gender nouns. They are neither male nor female like lifeless things. For example, a bench, a broom, leaves, wind, floor, or buildings. Now, we need to go on to diminutives. I want to understand that you have grasped or you are understanding the masculine and the feminine nouns. Let's go on to, still on page three, let's go on to diminutives or diminutive nouns. Diminutive nouns are used for baby people and animals or we can safely say the young ones of people and the young ones of animals are called diminutive nouns. For example, cattle, the young one of cattle is a calf. The young one of a dog is a puppy. The young one of a lion is a cub. We can go on and on and on listing the adults, adult animals, and their young ones. Okay, boys and girls, let's continue. Let's open our books on page four, where we have got an exercise that we are supposed to be doing. Your duty is to look into the box, the table with nouns, just pick or write those uh, nouns under the correct heading. For example, let me take mother, I will write it under feminine, right? So boys and girls, I think, or oh, I want to understand that you still remember Masculine, feminine, common gender, and the neuter. So do the rest. Without wasting much of our time, let's turn also our books on page five, activity two, where you are supposed to fill in the blanks with the correct masculine or feminine nouns. You are given, say that you are given masculine or Feminine, so you need to fill the blanks. Number one is saying master. Master is masculine. Mistress is feminine. So boys and girls, let's do the rest. Let's continue. Let's turn our books on page six, where you are supposed to complete the sentences. Fill in the correct masculine or feminine noun in the spaces provided. I will do likewise, number one as an example, the bull and the dash. If I were you, I was going to say, the bull and the cow walked in the field to look for food. Do number two, three, four, five for me. I know you are very clever boys and girls. Let's move on to activity four, where you are to choose from the box below again. Write the correct baby animal. These are diminutives. The baby animal next to the mother animal. We have got fawn, cub, duckling, calf, nestling, kid, baby, Goosling, lamb, and fowl. 
write these next to their mummy animal. Number one, we are having a lion or lion. What is the young one of a lion? Obviously, I know you will say a cub. Thank you very much, boys and girls. Let's turn our books on page uh, eight, activity five. There, we are having a comprehension. But our comprehension has got a lot to do with our today's lesson, where we are talking about diminutives and gender. But I would like to give you another skill for you to be able to understand comprehension passages. Uh, what I do is to read the topic first. Our topic is saying a holiday on the farm. A holiday on the farm. Then I will jump to the questions that are given about the comprehension. This will make you will make it easier for you to understand the comprehension. I will read the question number one is saying, who did the farm belong to? Is this statement true? The children fought a lot. Number three, name the three places the children look for animals. What was special about the calf? Which animals were aggressive? Where did the children have the most fun? What were they doing on the farm? The whole time. What are teddy poles? Write down every gender noun you can find in the story. Write down every diminutive noun you find in the story. Now, now you know what you have to spot or to look for when you are writing, when you are reading, sorry, your comprehension. So now I will go on to read my comprehension. A holiday on the farm. The children came from all over the country to stay with Uncle Peter and Aunt Miriam on the farm. The cousins knew each other well and loved being together all the time. It was great fun to run around the farm and look into all the corners and the cages. There were many animals kept in the barn too. The cow were the beautiful spotted calf. Under the tree were the chicken family, a rooster, hen, and chicks. All the ducks lives near the pond. Every day, the mother duck takes her five ducklings from a, for a walk to look for bugs. Aunt Miriam had a beautiful baby girl who slept a lot. So Aunt Miriam did not go to the fields. Uncle Peter said it was dangerous because the herd of elephants had a few cows with them. The elephant bulls and the cows were aggressive. The children had the most fun at the pond by the big old tree. While the children were looking